Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 24th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we continue to watch Invest 99L here today, moving through the Leeward Islands uh, during the day, bringing heavy rains, tropical storm force gusts in localized areas, and this adverse weather is now moving into Hispaniola and Puerto Rico uh, today and tonight, and uh, mudslides are a threat due to this heavy rain. We saw from Erica last year that a tropical wave or weak tropical storm can still cause uh, life-threatening weather in this region of the world uh, due to this uh, flooding potential, and so this will be a problem for the next day or so uh, in this region, and then this will move on toward the west-northwest and begin affecting the Bahamas perhaps parts of Cuba as well with upslope flow on the south side um, uh, of the wave. Uh, now looking at the wave a little bit closer here, this is the rapid scan visible just before sunset. We can immediately identify this low-level pinwheel uh, here. There's no thunderstorms obscuring it, so we can see that this is a circulation, if you will. However, it's likely not closed. At least it wasn't when the uh, recon air aircraft was in there earlier today. To not find westerly winds on the south side, and although it looks like it's spinning to the eye, it is, but it's also moving very quickly at the same time. So relative to the ocean surface, there are actually no westerly winds here yet. And so uh, we can't say this has a closed low. In addition, uh, we also have an area of spin over here in the Dominican Republic, and so there's kind of a double-barreled look to the system today, and this was not very well forecast by the models over the last couple of days. This part here was relatively unexpected, and uh, this is a problem for 99L because when you get spin-offs like this, it's removing vorticity or spin out of the region that the primary circulation is in. This is the dominant one. This one isn't going to take over, uh, but this one is getting robbed a little bit of some of the spin it could have had to itself because this little thing over here is moving away and into the mountains of Hispaniola. So this is something that was not quite expected by some of the models, uh, but we have seen that today. In addition, we don't see a lot of organized thunderstorm activity around the primary center today. You can see down here the dying remnants of the old convective burst from last night. You can see some spin there as well. That's the mid-level low, and uh, that was associated with a convection that is now dying here. We'll likely see during the night tonight another burst of convection somewhere in this area, but whether or not it's over this circulation remains to be seen. And uh, that will be key because, as we spoke about yesterday, uh, it's going to need convection to survive over the next couple of days as it moves west-northwest. Uh, and you can see why it, it needs convection right now because these uh, milky white cirrus clouds are streaming from left to right on your screen, indicating strong vertical wind shear over this circulation. And in order to fight that shear, it needs convection to be firing nearby. But so far, that's not happening. If we look at the water vapor imagery, we can see, as we talked about yesterday, a very thin trough in the upper levels here, easterly winds to the north, and westerly winds right over the region that 99L is moving into here north of Puerto Rico, and this thin trough is likely to keep some shear in the vicinity of the disturbance for the next two to three days, and this is the environment that uh, 99L has to get through, and once it gets into the Bahamas, the shear may let up, and the environment overall may become more conducive, and that's what we've been talking about for days now, but it has to get there, and in order to get there, it needs convection to fight this off. Otherwise, without that convection, if it just gets sheared for the next three days straight, it can dissipate before it has a chance to get going in here, so there has to be enough left of it once it gets into the Bahamas, and that's what we've been uh, focusing on for the last couple of days here. Now unfortunately the models aren't really helping us out here today any more than they were the last few days. This is the GFS afternoon run out to Saturday morning showing the low level vorticity here in the, the little trough. This is the wave axis in the Bahamas in three days and it really doesn't do much with this. It just kind of drifts north and brings very wet weather into the Florida and Southeast United States region but no tropical development occurs. Contrast that with the European model which develops this into a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane and uh, this is a very consistent solution from the European likewise the GFS very consistently showing no development here when these two models disagree it means there's a lot of uncertainty in the pattern and really both possibilities are still on the table it cannot yet be said with any certainty whether or not 99L will actually develop. Right now, the National Hurricane Center has 80% odds of 99L becoming a tropical storm over the next few days, uh, but there is still some uncertainty here, and it really could still go both ways. Uh, but if we assume uh, for a moment that a storm does form in here, there is also uncertainty in its long-term track uh, because of how complicated this pattern is. If we look at the GFS, 500 millibar heights in black here 
showing this uh, thin ridge over the eastern seaboard by Monday morning early here. This is the ridge uh, that we were talking about keeping 99L to the south and a threat to the southeast U.S. coast. Uh, the shading in here, the blue, indicates that heights have tended to fall on the model uh, by Monday uh, during the last few runs of the model. So as the, the runs have come in the last couple of days, the ridge has trended weaker on the GFS here. And this is contributed to on the ensemble mean showing this weaker ridge uh, by Monday morning. And then the system just kind of moves into Florida like this on the model and it uh, brings a lot of rain to the area like we said earlier uh, but does not develop and it just kind of moves north this is in contrast to the european which has a stronger ridge still on the ensemble mean by monday and so the system down near florida moves more westward and then turns north later and uh, that is a primary difference that is now developing between the two models it's unclear which one is more correct about the ridge. It's little details like this that can really influence the long-term future of a system like this. This is day five, and a five-day forecast here is not very certain. Uh, there are very little things that can change it. Just the subtle difference in this ridge strength uh, can completely change 99L's future in this area. Uh, so there are uncertainties in, in uh, that aspect of the forecast as well. So even if we do get a storm, it's not yet clear what will happen. And in general, before we have uh, a tropical storm, when we have a wave like this, models will often jump around uh, between different solutions. It's very hard to latch on to a system that doesn't even have a well-defined center yet. Remember, we kind of have a double-barreled look here. It's very difficult for the models to just latch on to one thing and uh, say, here's what it's going to do, because there's, there's a giant mess over a large area in here. It's very difficult to forecast this correctly. And we have a situation right now where the long-term future of 99L largely depends on how many thunderstorms it can fire around itself during the next 48 hours. That's not something that humans are very good at forecasting, and uh, we kind of rely on the models to give us some kind of agreement, some kind of consensus as to what is most likely. And unfortunately right now there isn't a very large consensus as to whether or not 99L will develop, and if it does, how strong and where it will track. So there's a lot of uncertainty in this region here. In general, this is a system that interests in the Bahamas and Florida should be watching carefully over the coming days, but we do still have a few days left to watch this system. There'll be a lot of waiting and a lot of watching until this weekend, and it's this weekend when we will probably be able to see what 99L is actually doing. And we might even know before then a little bit better uh, once it gets north of Hispaniola, but it's really not until this weekend that it is forecast to either develop or just dissipate. One of those two things will start happening this weekend. So we'll keep a close eye on this system. Again, the most immediate impacts right now are for the potential for life-threatening mudslides and flooding uh, in the mountainous areas of the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands here. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. Stay tuned to your local weather office and the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.